Hello. Uh, is this the accommodation office? Yes. How can I help you? Well, I've got a bit of a problem. I'm staying in the Godfrey White dorm, and on Monday, the warden came and told me that I have to move out this Thursday. Really? How long have you been staying in the Godfrey White dorm? For the last ten weeks. Oh. Have you been doing one of the summer courses here, then? Yes. I've been doing the academic language course since the beginning of July. And didn't you realize that your accommodation was temporary? No. I thought I would be able to stay there for the whole year. I didn't read the small print on the document. The warden went through it with me, and now I see my mistake. What is the problem faced by the student? Whose mistake was it that led to be problem? Oh dear, so you're looking for somewhere to stay then? Yes. Well, I'm afraid all the places in the dorms are full. The best thing you can do is look for a private house, but apart from being a bit costly, you'll have to share with three or four other students, and the meals aren't included in the price. Where can I find out about these houses? I've got a list here, but it's not up to date. Rooms are taken up every day, so it's hard to know whether a house has a free place or not. I can give you a photocopy of this list and you can ring round. Can I use the phone here? I'm afraid not. If we let everyone who asked do that, there'd be someone here all day. Do you have a map? It'd be useful to know where these places are. Yes, I can give you a map. This one's got the bus routes on it, too. So you can find out how easy it is to get from the house to the university. Great. What are the two things that the accommodation officer provides to the student? What is the problem with the private house? Why did the officer not let the student use the phone? And what if I can't find a place before Thursday? Well, the YMCA offers cheap beds. It's located halfway between here and the city center. You can get a bed in a shared room there, and you can also buy cheap meals. But you should phone up and book a bed in advance. It's very busy this time of year. I'll give you the number. D 
Do you need a pen? No, don't worry, I've got one. So the number's 482-5903. 482-5903? That's right. Anything else I can help you with? No, that's everything. Thanks. Bye. What is the other option as suggested by the accommodation officer? Why should the student book his bed in advance? What can be inferred about the accommodation officer's behavior? Oh, I fell asleep. Where are we? We're almost there. Oh no, I wanted to look out of the window to see all the places we flew over. Why didn't you wake me up? You looked very tired, so I didn't. That's so nice of you anyways. Where are we? It looks like a desert below, but I think we are near Los Angeles. We went over the Rockies a short time ago. The mountains were absolutely beautiful. I can't believe I missed that. I really wanted to see the Rockies. Sorry, Graham. You can sit next to the window when we fly back to New York. Thanks. Did you eat anything? I know you were hungry. Yes, about an hour ago. I ate chicken and rice. There was a dessert also, but it had pear in it, so I didn't touch it. I too am really hungry now. I didn't even have any breakfast this morning. Since you don't like chicken, and the alternative was Spanish scrambled eggs that looked disgusting, I suggest you buy something when we get to the airport. Okay. What other things did you see out of the window? Did you see Chicago and the Great Lakes? Yes, we flew right over Chicago. I could see little boats on the lake. It was wonderful. I can't believe I was sleeping. And I had a dream about flying, too. I think we're starting to land. Yes, we aren't so high now. What are we going to do when we get to Los Angeles? Let's go straight to the hotel first. I'm exhausted. Why didn't Barbara wake up Graham? Where are the two friends going to?
Why didn't Barbara eat the desert? What did Graham dream about? Where will the two friends go after landing in Los Angeles? Wow, Billy. Looks like you lost a lot of weight. I could hardly recognize you. Thanks, Amanda. I've been on a diet for about six months. I'm going to ask Rachel to marry me soon, and I want to be mentally and physically healthy. What does being overweight have anything to do with marriage? If you love each other, that's enough, right? Yeah, but I want to show her how much she means to me. And this is one way of proving it. I am changing for the better. Good for you. Hey, when do you plan on proposing to her? I think I'm going to propose to her on our two-year anniversary. Is she expecting it, or will it be a surprise? I think she expects me to ask her one of these days, but not anytime soon. You sure you want to settle down already? You're only 25 years old. Yeah, I didn't think I would get married until I was 30, but when you know she is the one, why wait? That's true. Hey, I hope everything works out. You're going to invite me to your wedding, right? Of course, man. Gosh, I'm still shocked how much weight you lost. You're getting real skinny now. I am working on a six-pack now. I have two lines starting to show up. I've been spending a lot of time at the gym. It is hard work, but I feel so good after working out. Where do you work out? I have a membership at Bali's. It's not too expensive, and I like all the equipment they have. I've been thinking about joining a gym. Are they having any specials right now? Yeah, they do. They have free enrollment and first month free. You should come by. I'll show you around. I can take in a guest so you can try it out before signing up. That sounds good. Let's go this Saturday. Cool. I'll call you in the morning. Why was Billy on a diet? Why did Billy want to settle so early in life?
What was so shocking for Amanda? How does Billy feel after working out? Where do the two friends plan to go on weekend? What are the privileges offered by Bally's Gym? South Korean Rescue Services have found no sign of seven people missing after an Airbus helicopter crashed into the sea off the disputed islets of Dokdo late on Thursday, officials said. The Airbus H-225 Super Puma aircraft, operated by South Korea's fire department, was carrying an injured sailor to hospital when it crashed shortly after takeoff from Dokdo. The Dokdo islets, which South Korea and Japan claim as their territory, are called Takeshima in Japan. They are controlled by Seoul with a small band of coast guards. The defense ministry said on Friday it had sent vessels, planes, and divers to scour the ocean for any sign of the seven people, so far without success. A suspected piece of the helicopter had been found by the investigators. The helicopter went into service in 2016 and was crewed by two veteran pilots. Also on board were three fire department responders, the patient, and another person. The H-225 model previously known as a Eurocopter EC-225, is a long-range, all-weather search-and-rescue aircraft. There were no immediate reports on what may have caused the latest accident. That crash led to a temporary grounding of most of the global fleet and prompted Airbus SE to make design changes to gearboxes. An Airbus subcontractor carried out maintenance for the model's main gear system between September and October, followed by test flying, and found that there were no safety issues.
<laughs> well, it is one of the biggest moments in a teen's life, turning 16 and getting a driver's license. But now it appears the majority of teenagers aren't in a hurry to get behind the wheel. A national survey by AAA says only 44% of teens are getting a license within a year of the minimum age in their state. This blows my mind, possibly because I am, I guess, the generation before this, where Susan Elizabeth, I remember it was seven months before you turned 16 that you could go, and on that day, you could take the test. And I was there on that day. I believe it. I mean, I'm with you. We hear studies a lot on the show, but this one, for some reason, mm -hmm. knocked me off kilter. I said, no way. That's the coolest thing you get to do as a teenager is get your license, your freedom. And these reasons, I don't think I quite understand well, So them. some of the reasons that they're saying that the teenagers don't have a car, mm -hmm. that they That's can get... That's a dumb reason. Like, we didn't have cars. Well, we parents' car. car. Okay, yeah. how about they can get around without driving? A little bit easier now than maybe it was 20 yeah. years ago. You have Uber. You've got Uber. Yeah, Uber yeah. makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. uh, gas is Are too 16 year olds Ubering? Wow. Yeah, what a, what a life. Yeah, it's okay. My 85 year old grandma. I guess, yeah, I don't know. It works out. Yeah. Okay, gas too expensive. That is not legitimate. It was no. much more expensive. Guess and you can always like the same as it was right when, when yeah. we were it was kids. 20 years ago yeah. right now. Uh, and then the last reason, just didn't get around to it, Kim. Yeah, just what the heck is like that? It? Lazy teenagers. <laughs> okay, first of all, get a job and then get your license to take yourself to that job. I'm not sure what's going on here, but like I that was, know. I remember that first day when you get your license and you're driving by yourself and that sense of freedom is amazing. I don't get why teenagers are not interested in doing that. I do and also, I mean, the, just a sense of independence. It's a different responsibility now than it was maybe 10, 20 years ago. The laws are a lot different for teenagers. Laws yeah, are different? Sure. Like, I just had a straight up license and now if you're right. 16, 17, you get, you, in almost every state, you get a kind of various Curfews, privileges, yeah, that's like it. That. So it's mm -hmm. a little uh, less enticing maybe. And I think 16 and 17 year olds are not uh, being pressured to get a job. Instead, they're focusing on schoolwork, activities after yeah. school. But don't so their parents they want anywhere. them to be able to drive themselves around so Where do they, they have, have to go? Anymore? Where do they right. have to go? They're, they're also able are they to just have socialized sitting online. up in their room? Are they alone? playing sports and doing stuff after school? I think that is one of the biggest things because mm -hmm. the way that teens are interacting now is so different than it was before because yeah. you can have a social life without ever leaving your couch. You wow. don't have to go to the mall. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You don't have to go to the mall. You don't have to go drive to meet your friends. Yeah. yeah. Just snap them. Yeah. Well, snap make, this is bad news for me. I'm looking forward to when my I kids know, can get their driver's license. Not going to happen. Well, you just want someone to 20. drive you around, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> this is true, guys. Well, today.
A giant bushfire on the edge of Sydney, which has blanketed the city in smoke, causing a spike in respiratory illnesses and the cancellation of outdoor sports, will take weeks to control, but will not be extinguished without heavy rains, firefighters said. Thousands of weary firefighters, who have been battling wildfires for a month, have been fighting nearly 100 blazes in New South Wales state. The mega fire in north of Sydney, Australia's largest city, was created on Friday when several fires merged and was now burning across 335,000 hectares. We need flooding rain to put these fires out. That's really what is going to stop it, said the New South Wales Rural Fire Service. These will take many weeks to put out. Wildfires are common in Australia during the hot summer, which begins in December, but this year the fire started much earlier, blamed on soaring temperatures, dry winds, and arson. Fires around Sydney has been pumping such vast amounts of smoke into the air that they appear as significant rain on the radars, the Bureau of Meteorology said on Twitter. New South Wales Health Minister John Matthew said late on Friday, around 1,140 people have already sought medical assistance for breathing issues or asthma in the past week, a quarter more than in a typical week. Six people have been killed, nearly 700 houses burnt down, and millions of hectares of land raised. Strong winds fanned flames toward several suburbs in southwest Sydney on Saturday. It's been going on all day. A fire came in from the back, and we put it out. But then another one came from the side. So the fireys covered the house in foam, said Luke Wright, who helped save his brother's home. The fence has been damaged, but that's about it. Very lucky, Mr. Wright told local media. Rural Fire Service Commissioner Shane Fitzsimmons said the worst might still be ahead with temperatures forecast to rise into the 40 degrees in coming days and no meaningful rainfall expected until late January. It's a tough couple of months ahead yet, and we've already seen the horrific consequences of fire so far this season, Mr. Fitzsimmons told Australia's News at 9 on Saturday.